Okay, folks, for this screencast, we're going to go over um, revolve plots. And so um, I posted a video on meshing, and I made a bunch of meshes, and then I showed this, like, really sweet uh, bowl here. And so uh, I'm just going to uh, open up a, n a new script here, uh, revolve plots.m. And so basically, if uh, you want to make a, uh, a mesh grid, you know, you go minus 10, 10. Uh, y equals x, 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 y, y is mesh grid, x comma y, and then mesh x, x, y, y, z, z, and z, z is x, x dot hat squared plus y, y dot hat squared. And so you plot this and you say, like, well, I don't like that it's clipped like that. That's really annoying. What do I do? And so basically what you need to do is you need to actually create the curve and then revolve it around the z axis. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to do this in steps. So this is the sort of Cartesian Cartesian coordinate system. And I'm essentially going to go, and then I'm going to do uh, polar coordinates. And so if I make x go from 0 to 10 like that, and y go from 0 to 10 like this, and then I make z just x dot hat, squared plus y dot hat squared, what just happened, dot hat, oop, dot hat squared, and I'm going to drop a figure down, and I'm going to do plot 3, x comma y comma z, like that, um, now notice that I just have this one curve here, and so what if I plot another curve on here, so what if I do hold on, and say, well, okay, make make x go from 0, 0 0.1 to 10, but make y just 0, and then make z x dot hat squared plus y dot hat squared, and then uh, plot 3x comma y comma z again. And now I've got this curve here, right? Um, you know, what's it called? I'm going to plot... Now notice that I went out too far here when I went from 10 to 10, but that's because 10 squared plus 10 squared is, um, is two times 100, uh, two times 10 squared, and this is just you know zero to one. So I'd, I'd have to go farther out. So um, 10 squared plus 10 squared square root of 200 is is 14. So I, instead of going to 10, I would go to uh, essentially square root of 2 times 10. And that should, yeah, so there we go. So then that those went to the same values. And so I could do the same thing and say, okay, now x goes do uh, 0 times x, and y goes 0, 0 0.1 square root of 2 times 10 like that. Oop. And then I could say z equals, same thing. I can just copy and paste this line of code, and then plot. Actually, I don't even need to read, oh yeah, I, I, I do, because every, everything is different. Or I, perhaps I don't. Yeah, let's try that. that, that, that that's that's a, a, an interesting thing. So then there are my, my three lines there, right? And so I'm getting to a situation where if I do this a million times, I can essentially revolve this around in a circle. So the other neat thing is that because my coordinates x and y are the same here, if I get rid of if I just compute z once, and I can actually get rid of z here, get rid of z here, um, didn't like it. Oh, okay, yeah. So you, you need to you need to do a, a, a lin space command. So um, n needs to be like a hundred, and you need to do lin space zero comma ten comma n. And then same thing, lin space is 0, comma 10, comma n. That way z is n. And then instead of going like this, you want to do uh, lin space 0, comma 10, four, sorry, 10 times square root of 2, comma n. Um, that's fine there, that's fine there. Um, and then again, lin space 0, comma 10 times square root of 2, comma n, like that. And so there we go. So then there's my three lines. And if you notice, I only compute z once. And here's my figure. I, I can move this up here like this. And so this looks kind of kind of for loopy, um, if you will. 
there's something going on here in the background that's sort of revolving my my thing around or my my curve around. And so if you if you look here, this is sort of the line is on the x-axis here, and then this is sort of rotated 45 degrees, and then it, again it's rotated um, this degrees. So what we might want to do is say, really what we want to do is we want to say for, say, theta equals 0 to 0 0.1, 2 pi, or let's just say 0, 45, 90, um, and I'm going to do times 180 over pi, or pi over 180. And I'm going to uh, pull these things in. And so I'm going to say, okay, well, I want to plot 3x. I'm going to do ro rotate and then z. z is going to stay the same, so I can pull that out. And so really what I need to do is I need to make x rotate and y rotate equal to something. And so the question is, is, uh, is w what do I do here? So um, what it really is, um, so what it really is, um, if I if I take a look, my the ray that actually went out here, that was really at zero. So it's really more like minus 45, zero, and then 45. That's how I want to rotate this curve here. And so if I do sort of a, a just this is a standard this is a standard 2D transformation. And you may have learned this in, in, in 2D dynamics. Um, if you haven't, uh, I apologize. But basically, it's going to be cosine of theta times x plus sine of theta times y. And this is going to be minus sine theta times x plus cosine theta times y. And hopefully, if I, if I did my math correctly, I've got my three lines there. So there's the first curve and then the minus 45 curve and then the plus 45 curve. And so if I just vary this and I go, okay, well, you know, don't go from minus 45 to 45, go zero to skip by two, go all the way to uh, two times pi like that. And uh, now look at that. I've got sort of all of my lines like in this sort of loop here. And so the question is, is then like, okay, well, how do I get the computer program to realize that, that like this is actually a, a mesh grid rather than a, um, what's it called? Rather than just like individual lines. And so that, that gets into how, how to make a mesh grid. And so let's talk about that. So in order for a mesh grid to work, down here at the bottom, we want to mesh x, x, y, y, and z, z. So the question is, is how big is this mesh going to be? Well, we already kind of know what's happening. If I look at theta here, theta is a certain size. So I'm actually going to pull this out here, and I'm going to say um, do lin space 0, 2 times pi, and I'm going to do revs, or, or revolves, if you will. And I'm going to say that the number of revolves is, say, 100. And so instead of... Um, doing for theta, I'm going to say um, IDX is 1 to length of theta, and then all I need to do is just instead of doing theta, I need to do theta of IDX, theta of IDX, theta of IDX, because now theta is a vector, and if I hit go there, um, here's my uh, revolve. And actually it's neat here because I, I haven't changed what X, X, Y, Y, and Z, Z are, so we can see that, you know, the difference between the Cartesian coordinate mesh and the revolve lines that I have. And so if I change the number of revolves to say 10 and run that, I just have um, a, a smaller number of revolves uh, there, which is uh, pretty neat. Um, okay, so then basically I have the number of evolves and I also have the number of coordinates here, n, which is say, essentially x and y. So what I want is I want xx to be a, a matrix of zeros and you have to look at what, what's happening here. X is going to be a um, row vector, right? And so the number of, uh, sorry, it's going to be a, uh, it's a one row by N column. And so I want this to be N columns. And the number of rows is the number of revolves. And so YY is essentially going to be the same size. And ZZ is going to be the same size. So when I do this plot three command, I can just say, well, give me the idx row, all the columns, and set that equal to x rotate. 
and then y y of i d x comma all is y rotate. And then so what's z z of i d x comma all? Well, that's easy. It's just z. It's always z. And so if I hit go on that, there is my um, my mesh revolved right there. And so if you notice, it look if you look at the number of evolves. There's, there's discrete data points here. There's my lines that I created, and there's my revolve mesh plot there. And so if I want it to be not as, as boxy, I mean, right, if I do, like, say, five, I would essentially just get, you know, this weird sort of a, a bowl structure here. If I do four, I should get a triangle, right? And then um, essentially you get all of the solids around there. But if I do 100... You know, I, I, I essentially just approximate a sphere, and so there's my revolve there. If I comment out this plot3 command and run that, now it gets rid of the um, thingy here, and it, and it revolves it just fine. Now, if you look at this code, and you look at, I'm going to open uh, Mesh2D from the other video, and I'm going to put this uh, over here. The, uh, the code is actually a little different. Um, there's still some sines and cosines, but I use this norm function. I'm still using sines and thetas, but I thought this was an easier way to explain it. Um, it's really up to you. Uh, this is essentially doing the same thing, except if you notice there's two for loops here versus one for loop here, so that's why I kind of like this better. I also like the fact that you know when, when you change the number of revolves to, say, five, you know, and you get a box and say six, you get um, a five-sided uh, pentagon. Um, you can really see what's actually happening. It's like a, it's making a mesh of all of those uh, different things there. So when you you rotate it and when you just mesh it together, you uh, it, it, the MATLAB just connects all the dots, and so you can do you know surf plots like this, which is neat. So it looks uh, looks a little bit cooler. Change the color map. You can do like color map uh, summer. If you want it to be a summer bowl, you know, I don't know. Anyway, I think that uh, concludes this uh, this video, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Good luck.